Okay, Mocha Down is right, is back at you, and of course, we're here to talk about the Donald Trump conviction on 34 felony counts. It's just, it's something we all should have expected. I think we all knew that was going to happen. Corrupt judge, frightened jury, liberal contaminated jury, but uh, and I'd like to sum it up for you, but no one's going to do that better than Megan Kelly. Let's listen to Megan. This is ridiculous. What a sad day. The country's been disgraced. That's what's happened. Alvin Bragg and this judge have disgraced the country. We made it, what, almost 250 years without doing this. And now, because of falsified business records. We've convicted as a felon, a former president of the United States. You don't think we could have done something like this to Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or others. We had a standard. We didn't do this in America. We aren't a banana republic, or at least we didn't used to be. And don't forget what's happened in this Trump case in which he's now been found guilty of all 34 counts against him, which was overcharged to begin with. It shouldn't have been a case at all. And once charged, it should have been one count. The whole case boils down to the same alleged scheme, but they stretched it into 34 counts by saying, and that check, and that check, and that check, and that invoice, and that invoice, it was all part of your scheme. So now he looks like Al Capone convicted on these 34 counts. But the idea all along was to stop him from becoming president again. That's the idea behind this prosecution. That is the idea behind Letitia James bankrupting his company that he built and along with his dad from the ground up in New York, the city that just turned on him. That was the idea behind E. Jean Carroll and her sexual assault case brought 30 years after the fact, alleging a sexual assault slash rape in a Bergdorf Goodman dressing room, a case she couldn't even remember the year of the alleged rape in. And that's the idea behind Fanny Willis and Jack Smith times two. Stop it. Stop him. Stop Trump. Why did they wait? Why didn't these cases come until right before the presidential election? The Democrats have been wringing their hands. Wasn't in time. We're not going to be able to call him a convicted felon unless you speed these things up. The judge in the D.C. January 6th case saying, I'll rush back. I'll come back from my European vacation. Don't you worry. If we get Supreme Court opinions allowing my case to go forward with Jack Smith, I'll be there. We've heard about the concern that Fannie Willis her case is going up an appeal, but she's going to try to find some way to pedal to the metal it. We've heard even in that January 6th case before Judge Chutkin, there may be a plan to try to get him tried. Even after he wins, if he wins in November, we could have a trial of the president elect in an effort to get him another conviction so they could convince electors to be unfaithful on January 6th of 2025. And that's where this whole scheme, and here it is the proper word, is corrupt. It's a before and after moment for America. What just happened today is a line we can't uncross. And these Democrats will rue the day. They decided to use lawfare to stop a presidential candidate. I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about tit for tat. You just wait and it won't be Hunter Biden the next time. It's going to be Joe Biden. It could potentially still be Barack Obama. It could still potentially be Hillary Clinton. We're going to have to look at what the statutes of limitations are on the various crimes they surely committed. We're going to have to look at passing laws to revive those dead crimes, felonies or misdemeanors so that those cases can be brought out of time. That what that's what may be in the interests of justice, just like they did for E. Jean Carroll with a New York state law that was passed so that she could sue him. That's what happened. 
turnabout is fair play. And John Yu, an amazing lawyer who worked in the Bush administration, Department of Justice, has a great piece out today talking about how that's the only way they'll learn. The only way to save the republic now is to give them a taste of their own medicine. That's it. That's it. They tasted blood today. They're the wolves with the bloody piece of meat in their mouths. That doesn't stop the wolf from coming back for more. The only thing that will stop him is if he loses a limb of his own. And I'm sorry, but the Democrats started this game in the same way the Republicans upped the ante when it came to, for example, the filibuster fight. The Democrats got rid of it for lower court judges. Mitch McConnell said, you will rue the day because we're going to be in control of this chamber one day and you're going to lose the filibuster at the higher level court and you'll, you'll be sorry. That's what needs to happen here. Who's getting indicted next? Joe Biden? Maybe Jill Biden. How low can we go? You may not want to see it. That, that ship has already left port. That horse has left the barn. That's where we're going. So before you celebrate too much over at MSNBC and CNN, who are positively gleeful, gleeful over this absurd conviction, you wait and ask yourself, ask yourself, what kind of Pandora's box has been opened here? Here was President Trump moments after the guilty verdict today. This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. But the real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA and the whole thing. We didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man, and it's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our Constitution. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent. And I think it's a, just a disgrace. And we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end and we'll win because our country's gone to hell. We don't have the same country anymore. We have a divided mess. We're a nation in decline, serious decline. Millions and millions of people pouring into our country right now from prisons and from mental institutions, terrorists, and they're taking over our country. We have a country that's in big trouble, but this was a rigged decision right from day one with a conflicted judge who should have never been allowed to try this case, never. And we will fight for our constitution. This is long from over. Thank you very much. Good for him. Long from over is absolutely right. This will be reversed. It will be reversed. This will not stand, mark my words, even in a New York appellate court system that is weighted with Democrats on the bench. The, the highest court in New York is called the Court of Appeals. It's not completely corrupt. It just overturned the conviction of Harvey Weinstein because he wasn't given a fair trial. They are capable of reaching a rational decision. And if they're not, this could be appealed up higher still to the U.S. Supreme Court. There were state constitutional violations here and there were federal constitutional violations here. Let me ask you a question for those of you sitting at home who listen to this show. What was the underlying crime? What did the jury find Trump was trying to cover up with this falsified business record? Was it federal election campaign law violations? Was it tax law violations? Was it additional business records violations? Do you know? No, you don't. Neither do I. No one knows. Neither does Donald Trump. Good luck. Good luck filing your appeal. He's in the same position he was in when he had to stand up first and argue the closing argument before he had even heard the prosecution's theory of the case. Now he's got to go up to the appellate court and try to guess, mm, gee, I don't really know what I've been found guilty of. I guess falsifying business records through unlawful means and the unlawful means were... Uh... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. We're not sure if the jurors took door number one, door number two, or door number three. That's the position he's in. 
Alvin Bragg ran for office on a promise to get Trump, a Soros-backed DA who doesn't want to enforce the criminal law against anyone. That's why we were all leaving New York in droves because of his policies and the policies of his old boss, the old mayor in New York. And this guy promised, if you elect me, I'll get him. Remember this? When I was in the AG's office, I sued Trump over 100 times for his administration's misconduct and brought a case against the Trump Foundation and held him accountable. I'm the candidate in the race who has the experience with, with Donald Trump. I was the chief deputy in the attorney general's office. We sued the Trump administration over 100 times. I know how to, to litigate uh, with him. I also led the team that did the Trump Foundation case. So uh, I'm ready to go wherever the facts take me. I'd be hard to argue with the fact that that's, that'd be the most important, uh, most high profile case. Uh, and I've seen him up front and seen the lawlessness that he can do. So I do have a lot of experience uh, with the former president. I think it's important to elect someone who is well prepared to pick up wherever um, the sitting district attorney leaves off. If 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 brought would be uh, one of the most consequential cases um, in the history of local enforcement. And we need someone who's ready on day one. He should be disbarred. He should be disbarred. That's how much damage he's done to the justice system. You must be so happy you lived up to your campaign promises. I'll give you that one hell of a politician, one shitty prosecutor whose obligation is to uphold the rule of law and to seek justice, justice, not just convictions. That's what you're after. Just convictions in the case of Donald Trump. That's all I want. Just give me the big C so I can get him like I promised. FYI, at this hour, Trump's donation website has crashed. You can feel, you can feel the number of people going there to pony up dough they didn't think they had. They thought they had given their last donation. People are hurting right now. There's tons of inflation, thanks to Joe Biden and other problems that we're all suffering. They're donating. And I'm sure it's by the tens of million. This will be a financial windfall for the Trump campaign and arguably for America. This jury, the jury of the American voters, will be heard on November 5th. They will have the final word. The sentencing will not take place until July 11th. That is four days before the Republican National Convention. That's the big event. They have the balloon drop. The candidate's family shows up. It gets the party excited for their nominee. Like, what's his vision of the country versus the other guys? How could he help my life? What, what might he do that could make things better for my kids versus what the other guy's promising? Let me hear the platform. Let me hear your surrogates. Let me hear you and what you stand for. And instead, they've decided to corrupt it, this judge. Of course, of course he has. By saddling Trump with his sentencing four days before it starts. One week before he accepts the Republican nomination for president of the United States. I don't think Trump's going to get jail time. I've said that from the beginnings. Garagos took me on on that. He said anybody not named Trump would. I don't think he's going to get jail time. But it's not outside the realm of possibility. Not with this judge. Not with this DA. Both sides have to submit their recommendations. What they believe should happen. That's going to happen uh, by, I think, June 13th. And what do you think this DA is going to seek? Do you think the DA is going to say, released on his own recognizance, community service? What do you think he's going to recommend? And this Judge Mershon has done everything Alvin Bragg has asked him to. Everything. Alvin Bragg won 99.99% of the motion practice in front of this judge. I mean, I, I don't think Trump is getting jail time, but I am not so certain I can predict it sitting here tonight. Um, so the sentencing, July 11th. In the meantime, reporting here from CNBC, Trump will be free to speak to the press, travel, and continue hit continue his presidential campaign. He will no longer be bound by the gag order. Oh, that's sweet. That, dis that barred him from discussing witnesses, jurors, and the judge's family members. She must be so thrilled. The judge's daughter, who's making tens of millions of dollars off of her own Get Trump campaign, 
for people like Adam Schiff, Judge Mershon and his rich daughter, who's getting even richer by the second, thanks to this verdict. He should have been disqualified. He should not have presided over this case. The appeal will be filed, of course, and it will take months, if not years. I mean, months, if not years. You know how they rushed this case? They rushed the January 6th case once he filed it, once Jack Smith actually filed it. Now everybody's in a rush. They're not going to be in a rush to resolve that appeal. Not the one that's going to take away the convicted felon label. Oh, no. The Biden campaign has responded to the verdict by encouraging people to vote. The Biden White House so far has released only the following statement through a spokesman. Quote, we respect the rule of law and have no additional comment. No, you don't. It's a lie. You don't. It's your Department of Justice that's brought the two most serious cases against Donald Trump, the ones that actually could land him in jail. That's because of you. And by the way, we know that you coordinated with Fannie Willis in her case against him too. We know that you were putting pressure on Merrick Garland. You were upset that he took so long to actually indict the cases. We know that. You're, you're not, you don't respect the rule of law. You've shat all over it. That's what you did. And we know it now. This case was rigged. It was rigged against Donald Trump. And there was ruling after ruling after ruling that would show you that. Judge Bard Brad Smith, Trump's campaign finance expert, the former commissioner of the FEC, which has exclusive jurisdiction to pursue claims for violations of federal campaign finance law, barred his testimony as unnecessary, reduced Donald Trump, if you're going to put him on at all, to letting him define a couple of terms, rendering him totally useless and pointless. So they didn't call him. The jury would have been confused. Why did he get up there, define four terms and get down? So he sent the jury into that room with Michael Cohen's and David Pecker's and the prosecutor's understanding of federal election law. That's it. Are you shocked? Are you shocked that they, when they got in there with no counterbalance, said, yeah, it sounds like he did it. Look at those other guys. They're guilty of it. Time and time again, Stormy Daniels, he allowed it all. Go on. He, they tried to stop it at the front. He said, no, she can do it. She can testify. Then in the middle, she gets salacious and disgusting. And he calls a sidebar saying, why didn't you object more to the Trump team? Okay, fine. She should have obje objected more. You just told them they could do all of this, right? It's like you, you allowed it all. You greenlit it. It happened. And then you blame the defense for not being more vocal while it was happening. That's on you, Judge Mershon. You did that. There wasn't an objection that the prosecution raised that he didn't sustain. I mean, if you watch, the, if you read the jury transcripts, it's just ridiculous the number of times he ceded the floor to the prosecution and dumped all over the defense. What he did to Costello, I know he was angry. Costello wasn't a good witness. Trump insisted on calling him. That was clear. He only called two witnesses. He was the only substantive one. And Costello didn't like the judge and behaved kind of badly. And the judge chose to humiliate him and throw a temper tantrum and clear the courtroom and basically telegraph to the jury that he didn't like him and didn't believe him. And guess what happened then? He wasn't even mentioned in the defense's closing argument, right? It didn't go well. And the judge saw to it that it wouldn't go well because he couldn't man up when Costello behaved poorly as a witness with the side eye and some mumbling under his breath in response to the judge's comments. Trump's team made mistakes and that's without question, without question. They didn't object to half of those jury instructions. They didn't object to the definition in there of campaign finance violations. My God, what? They let the jury go back there thinking that what was in Donald's Trump is the governing standard, what, what was in Donald's head. Is it the governing standard on figuring out whether somebody violated election law? Was it, was it mostly for the campaign? Okay, well, then it might have been. No, that's not the standard. The standard is, what's the nature of the payment? Is it the kind of payment that could ever be made for anything other than to advance a campaign? And if the answer is, sure it is. It could be used in a number of different circumstances, like a hush money payment. Then it's not a campaign finance situation. Brad Smith would have said that had he been given the chance. The judge did not understand the law and his jury instructions reflect that. The days to come will include 
over the top reactions by the media. Already we're getting things like Ellie Mistal, who writes for The Nation, who's on Joy Reid's show every night. Absolute racist, this man. Convicted felons don't get to vote. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. He may not be able to vote, but his supporters sure can. And if I know the country, and I think I do, I don't think there's anything you can do to stop the Trump voters now. I mean, I think as much as MAGA was prepared to vote for Trump before, and even disaffected Republicans who might not love Trump, they're going to run to the polls now. They're going to run to the polls now. The question that we have in the coming days and weeks is what about those groups of Republican voters who voted for Joe Biden the last time, who were starting to come home, who were starting to give him another look? And that, folks, I don't know the answer to. Independence, if you believe the polling, large numbers of them said, convicted felon could change it for me. Even some 20 to 30% of the Republican base, when polled, said convicted felon might change it for me. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Not here, not off this BS. But you can't underestimate the media and their constant drumbeat that we're, we're gonna get. We're gonna get over and over and over again, convicted felon, convicted felon, convicted felon. How is Trump gonna get any oxygen? you know, for his message. I don't know where this lands. If I have to predict, I say Trump gets no jail time and gets a reversal on appeal, but it comes too late, well past the presidential election. He was treated as beneath the law, as beneath scorn. What you've done to him, I went through the cases. Four criminal, E. Jean Carroll, Tish James, this Fannie Willis debacle down in Atlanta. What a farce. What a joke she is. Does anyone take her seriously? You saw now, you, like seeing her through that whole disqualification thing shows you, shows you. Look what he's up against. Look at this partisan rabid person down there. Do you think that's a fair prosecutor who's gonna give him a fair trial if she's given the chance? She's, she's not even smart. At least Jack Smith seems kind of smart. Not, not very good and obviously not honest, but like not a dumbass. That Soros-backed DAs hand-placed in these positions to not prosecute real crime, like Alvin Bragg, Fannie Willis and others, have seen a crime for the first time and gotten excited and salivated over the prospect of pursuing it because the defendant's name was Donald Trump. In this country, we're supposed to pursue crimes, not people in the criminal justice system. It's a before and after moment for the law and for us. So what I think is gonna happen is I think electorally, it's gonna help Trump more than it hurts him. That's my bet. I don't know, we'll see the polling over the next few weeks. I don't believe the soccer moms are gonna be so disgusted by this business records nonsense that they're gonna say I can't vote for him. But I don't know, because the media is just going to be nonstop. And I don't know that the increased enthusiasm on the GOP side will be enough. You, you can't win with just Republicans. You need independents, too. Net, net, though, you couldn't ask for something better to stimulate enthusiasm on the GOP side. You, you couldn't ask for better. This doesn't stimulate Democrats. They're not like, yeah, now I'm really going to vote for Joe. I mean, if anything, they're going to watch how Trump handles this. And they might feel a little sorry for the guy. What are we doing? Right? Who are we? You'll find out. Read the John Yu please, piece on National Review. You'll find out. When the shoe is on the other foot and all your favorites. Let's find, let's take a look into Michelle Obama. Does she do anything? Let's find out. Let's kick the tires a little on their foundation and figure out whether there's a crime to be had. If that's how we're gonna do it now, we're gonna pursue the person, not the crime, then let's do that. Great. Why not Dr. Jill? What the hell? How about Joe? You know what? We already had a special counsel say that he was guilty of a felony, but he couldn't pursue him because well-meaning elderly man who a jury wouldn't convict. Well, that's not always gonna be the case. When Trump takes over, if Trump takes over, we might need a new, fresh, 
look at the Joe Biden case. I'm sorry we didn't make these rules, but we're going to have to lo- learn how to play by them. And there you go. Yeah, so Donald Trump, I gather, actually raised $54 million in the first uh, 10 or 12 hours after he was convicted. His his uh, campaign fundraising website went down. And, um, and you've got to admit, that's pretty funny. Uh, his popularity in the polls, I believe, went up. It, it, it's insane. I mean, I guess we should be grateful that the Democrats are as stupid as they truly are. Because if they weren't stupid, they would have ignored him from the very beginning and forced him to act out in order to get attention. But since they are stupid, well, we've we've just got uh, a situation where all this money he's paying in lawyers, it's probably getting close to about $60 million in lawyers' bills. Uh, all of that now isn't uh, isn't wasted. He's probably got well over a hundred million dollars worth of free publicity. And I mean, I think that's a good thing. I'm not a Donald Trump sycophant. I like the guy. I'm going to vote for the guy. I voted for the guy every time in the past. But the truth is, is he is a symbol and, and essentially the creator of the MAGA movement which is the Make America Great Again movement. If you have a problem with the idea that we should make America great again, well, you know, screw you. Uh, I think we need to make America great again. I think we need to see a lot more candidates along the lines of Donald Trump. Um, He's a little rough around the edges in the sense that he's a tough New Yorker. Uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. I think that's great, but it does tend to chase off some of the the weak suburban women. You know, that's really more their problem than Donald Trump's. But I think it would be interesting if after Donald Trump's next four years, it would be nice if he was replaced with someone who was maybe just a little bit smoother. You know, maybe Vivek Ramaswamy will be ready by then. He's not ready now, but maybe he will be. I sure like the guy. Let's talk about something John Yu had to say. And basically, John Yu has taken the position. And if you're not familiar with John Yu, you know, he's famous for being the lawyer that told the Bush administration torture was okay. Uh, He didn't actually say that. What he actually said was what was being proposed was not torture. And I tend to agree with that. Uh, Today it would be because they've changed the rules. But at the time, waterboarding wasn't torture. And so he's famous for that. He's a law professor, I think, at Stanford. Let's hear what John has to say. Former President Trump, his New York conviction is not the end of his legal battles. As you know, he still faces sentencing and appeals, as well as a looming Supreme Court decision on immunity. And then there's those three other criminal cases. Let's bring in UC Berkeley law professor John Yu. And I haven't heard your take yet um, overall on your feelings about the verdict. It may be that the facts, as the prosecution believed them, were true. But it doesn't matter what the facts were because there's serious legal errors here. Remember how complicated the case is. You've got a misdemeanor about bookkeeping that somehow transformed into a felony because it was used to cover up or enable some kind of other violation that the prosecution didn't really prove and didn't even tell Trump until the jury instructions. I think that alone is grounds for reversal. But I think the worst thing is the damage that this is going to do to our political and constitutional system because the more frivolous the weaker the kind of case that you can bring against a president now, the more that this invites further prosecutions of presidents. And presidents are now going to have to worry about their legal liabilities and getting prosecuted by people years later when they're in the middle of making some of the most difficult decisions on behalf of the country. Wait, so wait a second. So so let's just say President Obama he hasn't been president. President Bush has been president for a long time. L- a local prosecutor could reach back and charge them with something now? Oh, yes. And it's I think it's even worse than that. I think it's almost that now that this precedent has been set, Republican DAs are going to have to go after Democratic Mm. presidents in order to try to repair this violation of norms, because otherwise this has succeeded. Right. You've got a partisan elected DA in a city in Manhattan, inalterably opposed to Donald Trump. The guy campaigned on prosecuting Trump. 
And he's now succeeded in trying to harm President Trump and running for office. If Republicans don't retaliate in the same way, the Democrats are just going to keep doing it to every candidate. There's nothing to Could stop Could it help them. repair things if, I know that's unlikely, but I'm just going to throw it out there, everybody. If Governor Hochul, maybe at the request of President Biden, were to pardon President Trump at this moment, would it matter? I think the best thing to happen were actually for the uh, Court of Appeals to yeah. immediately Slap intervene back. and say, right, the law and was wrong And what do you mean by here. immediate? Judge How Marchand soon could that happen? Well, I think that the Todd Blanche and his attorneys um, and his fellow attorneys could, on behalf of President Trump, seek some kind of emergency review from the Court of Appeals, ask for expedited mm -hmm. review. They could get this issue all the way to the Supreme Court because at the bottom of it, what the DA did here is try to enforce federal election law, right? He claimed that Trump somehow made an illegal campaign contribution to himself and didn't report it. State DAs, city DAs are not allowed to prosecute federal law. Right. The Supreme Court has made this clear several times. So actually, Trump could get this up to the U.S. Supreme Court and ultimately win. OK, well, we'll see about that. John, you thank you for joining us and for all of your commentary and analysis during that trial. We appreciate it. Thanks, Dana. So one of the things he's saying there is is that he thinks there should be a payback in kind. He thinks the Trump administration should pop in and uh, once they're sworn into office, you know, get an attorney general that's going to prosecute Biden, Clinton, perhaps even Barack Obama. And Biden and Clinton are both so clearly guilty of felonies. Barack Obama, you know, his killing um, of U.S. citizens while he was in office, killing them in foreign countries is probably something that, that is covered under any any rational presidential immunity. And, of course, the Supreme Court will be ruling on Donald Trump's presidential immunity. They're actually going to rule on all presidents' presidential immunity. What we would expect all presidents to be immune from is acts within, within the, the normal confines of their office, not personal acts, but acts that a, a president performs in the normal course of his job and even in the unique and unusual circumstances of his job. So that would make Barack Obama immune. It would also make uh, Donald Trump immune from all the stupid January 6th claims. That Those are clearly almost as bogus as this crazy New York trial. What do you think? Um, you know, let me know in the comments if you think Donald Trump should actually respond in kind, assuming he gets elected, which very much looks like he will, and I very much pray that he does then uh, do you think he should respond in kind and start prosecuting these Democrats? Or do you think he should try to stay above it uh, and essentially be the bigger person? I'll tell you, I tend to agree with John Yu. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm about 90% in agreement that, that John Yu uh, is correct when he says the Democrats are just not going to learn their lesson until they get the same treatment. And hopefully, you know, Trump could do that by uh, appointing a special prosecutor the way that Smith was appointed to go after him. And that prosecutor could curry favor with some local prosecutors the way that Smith did uh, with the New York prosecutors and with the um, Fannie down there in Georgia. And I, and I think that, that all that could go on and Trump could stay above that fray not really be directly involved with it, knowing that he's put a really good pit bull on the job. And I think that would be the right thing. Going after Biden for what he did as vice president, going after Hillary Clinton again, and going after the FBI director for perjury to Congress, going after a number of, of Biden officials for perjury, going after a number of rank-and-file FBI and ATF who have uh, murdered citizens, murdered U.S. citizens, That I think that's appropriate because that'll be part of the cleanup that Donald Trump has to do in getting rid of about a third of the FBI and, and maybe getting rid of agencies like the ATF completely, maybe building something new or, or maybe eliminating them entirely and putting them into the U.S. Marshals Service 
uh, without moving the people over, uh, something like that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, thank you. We really need your help. So please like, comment, and subscribe. We really need you to do that. Uh, I'm, I haven't been putting that many videos out because I've been kind of busy, but I'm goofing off today. And so please like, comment, and subscribe. God bless, and you have a fantastic day. Get ready, stand by.